Hey guys, this is George with Firehouse Music, and today I want to talk to you about a real simple concept, three note chords. Now these three note chords are very useful because they allow you to expand onto um, other chord types. So like say you're near jazz, or you're trying to get into jazz music, and you see the number of chords out there and it's it, it can be overwhelming, like oh you have to learn 60 chords, 120 chords overnight. So with, uh, with this system, um, you only need to learn, well, no, on a seventh string, you would have to learn four shapes. Is that right? Four shapes. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four shapes. Um, on a sixth string, you only learn three uh, for each chord type there is. And really, I like simplifying chords into just major, minor, and dominant. So that's it. So you learn potentially nine to 12 shapes, and then you have access to everything you know i'll show you how you can modify that and everything else so um so it's it's really very simple we look at the the main notes that you need to build a chord so that's going to be your your root because you won't know what chord it is if you don't have the root you can argue that if you have a bass player you don't need it we're going to assume that you're by yourself so you don't have a bass player it's just you so you need the root then you're going to need your third and your seventh and that's it root third and seventh um, everything else we can add later. So we just so we end up with a three note shape that we can move around. And then the only thing that um, um, that we're gonna be limited by, or rather, the reason why we have multiple shapes is because we need a root on the seventh string. So say we're playing major chords. So we're playing root, root, seventh, and third. All right. So this is kind of like a drop two voicing. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. So. So we have root, seventh, and third, right? Uh, root on the seventh string, and then we have our major shape. Then I have to transpose that, move it down to the next string. So now root on the sixth string, same thing. Root, seventh, third. Then when I move down to the fifth string, it would look the same except because of this compensation we have on the second string, we move that note up a half step. So now we have this for um, our major, steel major. And then when we uh, move back here, this moves further, so now we are here, and then, right? So, and these shapes are all movable, so you don't, you don't necessarily have to play them on the third fret like I was doing, and go three, four, four, three, four, four, three, four, five, three, five, five. But, uh, but you can play this anywhere, right? If you wanted to play it on fret eight, I don't know. So here, it would look the same. You'd be here, doing this. And it transposes the exact same way. Sorry. And then here. So that's a very useful tool. And then, of course, then we have our minor shapes. So minor, so we move down. Both the seventh and the third move down by a half step. So we have this. I guess I should name the frets, right? So when we play in major, we have, if we're starting on the third fret, so we have third fret, we'll skip over the string, and then we have fourth fret, fourth fret. So we're doing this. Then on the fifth string, sorry, on the sixth string, same thing. So we have three, skip over, go four, four. Then on the fifth string, we got fret three, skip over the string, fret four, fret five. And then finally, on uh, on the fourth string, we're gonna have fret three, skip over the string, we have fret five, fret five. So we do the same thing for minor uh, chords. So they both, they, the seventh and the third move together down a half step, so that's just a fret, so we just do, we go here. And now we have, right? So three, 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 skipping over the string. Same thing on the sixth string, nothing changes. When we get to the fifth string, once again, because we're crossing over the third and the second string, we have to compensate, move up a, a, a fret. And then on the um, fourth string, three, four, four. Right, so altogether we have three, three, three. Three, three, three. Three, three, four. And then 
1344. And we can move, like I said, we can move the shapes anywhere. That's not, that's why I'm not naming notes. Um, because there could be it could be anything, right? So here, in this example, we're playing F. Oh, no, I messed up. Sorry. We're playing D. So it'd be D, then C, and then F. Then on the next example, on the sixth string, we're playing G, F, and B flat. On the next, C, B flat, and E flat. Then F, E flat, and A flat. But you don't have to worry about that. Just play the shapes. You'll be fine. Then finally, we have dominant. If you're trying to play dominant chords, so then, uh, if you want to think from the modifying from the major, you'll be moving the seventh down a half step. If you're modifying from the minor, you're moving the third up a half step, right? So now, so our shape looks like this. All right, so now I have three, three, four. Then when I move down, same thing. I move down one more, we have to compensate. So then the second string is gonna move up an additional fret, so it's three, three, five. And then over here, then both notes end up uh, uh, moving up. So then we have this. Wait, we're doing dominant, yeah, so. Three, four, five. So how do you take the shapes that we learned? And then obviously you gotta study them, practice them and everything else. Maybe I'll have um, um, Eva put it on the screen so you guys can see the, the shapes. So how, how do we turn them into chords that we can use? You can play them this way. And it'll be just fine. It's just gonna be really vanilla. You're not really gonna be adding anything to the um, to the track and stuff. But you can, um, if you add an additional note, say we we have our, our major chord here. I can add the fifth, and it's just a major seven chord. I can add the sharp eleven turns into a major 7 sharp 11. I can add the 13th, then it turns into a major 13. I can add the 9th, and it turns into a ninth chord, a major ninth chord, sorry. Right, so pretty much anything, anything that you add there, you keep these notes here, and you have access to pretty much any sound that you want. Same thing with the dominant chords. You're playing a dominant seven chord. There, sorry, wrong bass. I can add the sixth if I want. The sharp five. The fifth. The flat five. So it's all there. That's literally all I did. And I'm just keeping the bottom the same. So you can build any chord that you want. Um, and that I think that's that's useful because when you're comping, you don't really want to be thinking about like chords as like their own like each block of chords that are just moving. But you want to think of these little shapes, and you're playing melodies, and you're playing around with the top note. So I um, a really good way to get started on that is by playing very simple shapes. And this is not an exhaustive or the only approach that you can uh, follow for this kind of thing. It's just one of many examples um, that would allow you to simplify, um, you know, learning chords on the guitar, which it's a, it's a pretty um, lengthy endeavor. And um, so something that we're always studying, if, if you're trying to get good at the guitar, especially if you're trying to play, you know, R&B or jazz or something like that, um, you need to have a decent chord vocabulary Versus if you're playing, you know, classic rock or something like that, then just power chords and cowboy chords is enough. Um, so, so yeah, I hope um, I hope all of this makes sense and, and this tip was helpful. I won't, I'm trying not to keep the video too long. Hope I didn't spoke for too long. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna have diagrams and everything up so you guys can uh, can actually make use of this information. And let me know if if it works for you. Um, and let me know if he doesn't. If you think if you think like this is nonsense or if I'm making things harder than they, they ought to be, just let me know. And, you know, I'm not. I don't claim to know everything. I, I yeah, I can still learn from you. So just uh, just let me know and um, um, 
yeah, I'll catch you guys next time. If you're interested in lessons, you guys know all well, the contact information is going to be at the bottom of the video. Um, so, yeah, see you guys next time.